Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about our rental experience in Canada, Alberta. First time landed immigrants renting a vehicle from the airport to be able to do all the things that we do. But first, let's run some errands. So come with me. I'm about to drop off the vehicle right now. Uh, I'll show you a clip from the last day I had a vehicle when I dropped it off and I took the bus back home. So let's just go on a little adventure dropping off the vehicle and then we'll have a chat and talk about all the details. Settling is, it might be a long video. Um, a lot of people have been asking in the comments, what's the deal with the car seats? All of those questions we're answering today. Very long, very informative video. And at the end, I'm going to reveal how much it costs to rent the vehicle for about nine days total and all the different things that I did to reduce those costs. So all of that in this video right now. So currently at a detailing shop, I came to look at a vehicle that somebody had that was selling, just came to check it out. Today's the final day that um, we have the vehicle. So I'm just about to head off to return it to the rental company. Um, I had organized it such that drop off was not the airport because the airport is pretty far so i'm dropping it off somewhere in a, in a, i think it's not too far from home but i'll need to take a i believe i need to take a bus um back home something like that i'm not sure i'll figure it out five kilometers, take a slight right turn onto Yellowhead Trail Northwest. Turn left onto 112th Avenue. The destination is on your right. Arrive. So you join me once again here. Let's look at this entire process and how it's been. Um, one thing that we've been getting in the comments and one of the questions we've been, that we've been asked a lot is like, how did we do it? Like, how did we rent a truck? A couple of people said it was pretty brave of us to do this. Um, but there's a couple of considerations, right? So we knew we were coming in as, you know, as, as uh, permanent residents, as new immigrants. So we kind of had to organize airport um, transport, right? So airport pickup. So there's, there's several things that you need to do in the first few days to the first few weeks. So of course, there's the airport pickup. You need to get from the airport to wherever it is that you're staying. Then you also need to you know move around, go get some groceries. You need to get furniture, get stuff for the house. Uh, we wanted to pick up a couple of things from Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. And you know when you're shopping on Facebook Marketplace, you can't just buy it straight off. You have to actually go there, inspect what it is that you're buying, make sure it's legit, that it's in good condition, all of those things. So it's it's nice if you're a little bit mobile for that as well. And as well, we wanted to, to be able to do all of the documents that we needed to do. So we come in as permanent residence. There's a ton of documents and stuff that um, we needed to do. If you need more information on that, we have a weekly vlog that should be out now. You can check that out up here. And all the documents and things that we needed to go, the place we need to go, Service Canada, the, the banks, all of those things, run all of those errands. And it was a family of four because we had two kids with us. So it's convenient obviously if you have your own vehicle but 
renting is not the only way to go about this because if you have very good um, tight close relations friends family in the city or the the, the province where you go into the close by and they have a bit of free time because that's the other thing you have to consider not just because you're moving into you know you, you're excited you move into a new country you move into a new city you know that your friends and family that may live there that their lives goes on pause because you have arrived so it's something to just think at the back of of your mind um, that even if you do have friends and family in a particular place that they might not always be able to actually take time off their work to be able to move you around you just have to manage your expectations that you can't just expect people to just drop what they're doing or just stop their lives because you've arrived right so if it's possible they may be able to pick you up from the airport um, and they may be able to do a lot of all these errands and stuff with you of course another option is just getting to the airport and taking a taxi or taking um, uber like a ride share so that also depends on the location of the airport um, for example when we landed in toronto in pearson depending on where exactly it is that you may be staying in ontario if it's ontario that you're going and you're landing in person that might be an option just getting an, an uber or some sort of a ride share taxi service and just you know get get a drop off at your airbnb or the home where you're going to stay and then that's easily solved um, another option might be paid settlement services. There are people that you can pay to assist you with transportation. They will pick you up at the airport and they will also help you in the first 24 hours to help you to go do some grocery shopping around the city and around some places to pick up some stuff and, and be able to you know stock up your home and all of those things. Now, for us personally, we didn't have the option of friends and family because we didn't have anybody in Edmonton that we knew and nobody certainly that we knew at that level and at that level of closeness that you know could have definitely gone and pick us up from the airport and you know run all of these errands with us so that was straight off out of the window the other consideration was when I now looked at the you know like the next possible thing which is what everybody does right you know you take an uber or you take a ride share you know like a taxi service and go to your home if you look at the map of edmonton where it is that we actually you know came into when you look at the map you're going to realize that the airport is outside of the city and not only was it outside of the city it was almost an hour's drive to our home because we stay in, in the northern part of Edmonton and the, the airport is all the way outside of the city in southern Edmonton so it was almost an hour's drive getting to our residence right so suddenly when we began to factor in the calculation the cheapest um, we were getting in terms of transportation um, whether it was paid settlement services as in you pay somebody who does settlement services um, to come pick you up at the airport maybe um, if it's early enough maybe help you get some groceries um, doing that and also even uber like it was it was costly it was i think the cheapest was about 200 us cheapest if we had to do an uber we would needed we would have needed to maybe do uber excel 2 because like you y'all saw the video when we landed uh, um at edmonton we had eight checked in luggage eight checked in suitcases by the way for those of you that have been following along on the journey thank you so much um i see a ton of you are not subscribed so now is a good time to hit the subscribe button um so yeah we had like eight suitcases checked in luggage and we had like four hand luggages plus all the bags and then with the kids so we will have needed like two um uber xl um to take us to our place of residence and that's just one trip so that will have been several hundred dollars already so that had me thinking what if we could just find an option to rent a vehicle for the similar amount of money that we would have spent only on airport pickup only just that one day one night we arrived just to pick us from the airport take us to the place where we stay what if we could spend a similar amount of money but then we had our own vehicle 
that we could move around for the next few days maybe a week and get all of those other errands done so this is supposed to be the scary part right it's like ah, you guys are new you, you, you've never been to canada you come in in ah, you just go and pick up a vehicle bam ah, on the road boom you drive it but <clears throat> So let's, let's give a little bit of a backstory. This is not the first time we've done this. Those of you that have been long time subscribers of this channel, you, you saw us do the travel to Africa vlog um, last year and we did something similar. And here's my thing, right? There's always a first time for everything. So in 2021, we, we went to the US. My wife convinced me that, you know, we should take a drive like four hours away I think it was about about four hours away to go see some family down in another state because i hadn't seen my family for a little while so you know she was like hey you know we're here we're in new york it would be good for us to you know to go down there and, and you know you know just to visit so i was like okay so we looked at all the options we looked at flight tickets and it was it was coming to the same thing paying for a flight for me and her um so we were like you know what it's the same amount of money let's just spend it and get a vehicle to rent to drive down there and then you know we get the experience it's you know it's all part of it the road trip experience and all those things let me tell you that was an experience so in order to get here we took a vehicle to the train station at we, took, we took a number two from because it was it turned out to be a little bit more expensive like not a little bit way more expensive I'll, I'll put the cost the total cost here but it was a way more expensive we rented the vehicle for three days i believe and it turned out to be way more expensive than i bagged it was the first time doing it so what did i do i got extra insurance for the vehicle since it was my first time renting i was like okay if if there is something happens you know accident whatever we need to be covered but also in terms of health, liability, all of those things. So it was like very good coverage insurance added on to the amount we actually paid um, to rent the vehicle. I did this off the Turo app. So some people might not know this, but there's an app called Turo where people put up their own vehicles for rent. So, but boy, it was expensive. The, the, I didn't consider the toll roads. The toll roads, months later, I would just get an email you've been charged eight dollars a toll road in maryland you've been charged fifteen dollars <laughs> it was just the additional money that i spent it was like why not <laughs> this is stuff so last year we did the travel to africa vlog and it was something similar we had we had a layover in the states for a couple of days and we wanted again to um pop down to maryland to see a couple of um to see some family members do some stuff so this time it was like okay you know let's just make this fun so we rented a tesla at that time hertz made the deal with tesla so the teslas were cheap to rent and if that was actually more cost effective than the first rental i actually spent almost half as much i think it was about 240 again i'll drop the cost on the screen it was about 240 dollars um to rent for about the two days which was not bad considering it you know it's a tesla um, I didn't have to pay gas like the first time I had to pay, like fill up the vehicle, pay for gas and all those things. The charging um, was was way cheaper than paying gas. Um, the, I didn't have to pay as much for tolls. I learned my lesson. This time I paid up front. I think it was like $30 and then I was not billed for tolls. So that was good. But we did have to get car seats because in New York, the laws was like, you know, you needed to have child restraint. So we had to rent car seats as part of that. 
so that was the tesla experience that was just last year there's a whole set of vlogs and videos about that if you want you could go check it out um i documented that road trip driving the tesla testing out the you know the autopilot system and all of those things it was crazy so what are the things that you actually need when you're coming in to rent a vehicle all you need is a driver's license that's all i needed when i went to the states i had a st lucian driver's license and i just showed up i had already researched it and i realized that with um, a st lucian driver's license or out of country driver's license that i could drive internationally in most places in the world and most places in the world accept it whether you're coming from nigeria india even in canada there's people who come in as students from trinidad i just met a lady from trinidad who came in with a trinidad and driver's license she was a student she was driving for two years so if you come in as a temporary resident you don't need to switch your driver's license you could just drive with your license from home because technically canada is not your permanent resident so you don't need um, to switch over your driver's license if you come in as a permanent resident um, you're allowed to use your driver's license from home for three months now when i rented first with tour i didn't need a credit card however if you come in and you're renting from like the big corporations hertz enterprise budget our rental was from budget avis budget the same company um when you rent in they want you to have a credit card so last year i had to apply for a credit card um from home and because I mean, it makes sense right so if you if if they charge you a certain x amount of money ten dollars to rent a vehicle right you come you pay ten dollars and you use a debit card and all you have is ten dollars in your account if later on something goes wrong or they need to bill you extra they can't right so so that's why they, they always want you to have a credit card on file so when you're renting in the vehicles you're required to rent it with a credit card they need a credit card on file so in case of additional charges and in my case right here when we did this um in edmonton there was additional charges stay tuned for that um, um so yeah they will just you know bill your credit card afterwards so I knew that all you need is a credit card. You need a credit card from home, wherever, just any credit card, Visa, MasterCard, Amex. You need a credit card and a valid driver's license. Now, a ton of people keep going on about the international driving permit. Now, the in an international driving permit is just a document that translates your driving's license, your driver's license to other languages. In fact, your an international driving permit is not valid by itself right now i also had that misconception when i first wanted to rent a vehicle i went like do i need an international driving permit and i went to transport at union in in St. Lucia, right and i found out all the details how to get it and then i researched and i realized i don't need it right and i didn't need it for me personally because the country i was going to which the states canada I speak English and my license is in English so I mean you don't necessarily need an international driving permit now if I was going to a country let's say I was going to an Asian country uh, Malaysia Singapore China or any of those countries where maybe or Japan where you know like what the, the language that your license is in is different from the national language you might run into trouble if you know police officer asks you for your license and they can't really read it that's when you want an international driving permit to accompany your license i also had that misconception i thought when you apply for an international driving permit you know you go through a class you have to do a course you have to take an exam and issue this super powerful permit that you can go anywhere no no it's it's just a translation of your of your driver's license and um you need both if you have your international driving permit you also you need it with your driving your actual original driving license for it to be valid you can't just show up and be like yeah i have an international driving permit like nah by itself it means nothing um it's just a translation of the actual original right like i said there's always a first time for everything but when i did it the very first time boy i i studied for this like it was an exam like <laughs> you can ask me now <laughs> i studied for this like it was an exam because first of all the first thing that i did um that was a couple of years ago was 
I refreshed on all the road signs, the road markings. You know, just you know, just pull up um, just a, a quick YouTube or search video. Um, not even a video, just a page, any booklet or whatever that you did in driver school. Especially like when you coming from a place like Saint Lucia, um, or if you coming from actual Saint Lucia, if you coming from a third world country where perhaps all of the different signs and symbols on the road um you know you might not necessarily see them around and all of those things so you want to refresh yourself to you know what those signs and symbols and all those things mean so you want to just acclimatize your mind to it so you know you look through it you know you just spend a couple of days every now and then when i had free time spend five minutes just reading through the signs oh this is what this are ah, okay you know you just familiarize yourself with that right Besides, I was going to I have to do the exam anyways. I have to do the knowledge test. So it was all part of it. So, you know, but from before when I was um, renting as a tourist, I did that. The other thing that I did was like I tried as much as possible to familiarize myself with the roads. So the first time, remember the first time that I did this that I drove out of, you know, country and in the US. It, I was doing it from point A to point B, you know, go visit somebody and go back, right? So what I did was, I mean, this is incredible, I just pulled up a YouTube video of people that had filmed the four-hour drive from um, that state to the other state, and they had videos online, right? And I pulled it up, and I sat down there, put it at times two speed, and I watched and as I'm watching, I'm looking at the Google map. Look, it's serious geek stuff, right? So I'm looking at Google Maps. I'm looking, I'm like, ah, when you reach a place, I pause. I'm like, ah, okay. So there is four lanes here. There is two lanes there. I'm, all of this, right? Is, you can see it even on Google Maps, right? When you go on Google Maps, there's a particular, again, I'll try to put it on the screen. There's a particular place that you could go that you could get street view. So it will show you like a picture of the street. So you, you can literally put yourself in there and you can see the signs and already you know what lanes you have to be taking and all of those things. So, so you're preparing your mind already for the journey. So when I did the drive in the States, for example, there were places that I reached that it was like I felt like I had driven that road before because so many times on Google Maps I've been like, okay, because when it's a straight road, it's a straight road, right? But when you have to do the intersection and then, you know, you turn right, then you go on a left lane, then take a left, then take a right, you know, like all of those things, you know, so you look through those things. So Google helped a lot. Google Maps, YouTube videos of the driving the road, because it's one thing to know how to drive. And it's another thing just knowing where you're going and what lane to take and or getting used to a little bit of those things so that helped me a lot our total cost for renting the vehicle for a total of nine days a truck ram 1500 2023 drum roll was 298 us dollars which is about 410 canadian so Apart from that, there was um, a couple of additional costs. So additional cost was you, we got the vehicle with a full tank of gas. So the, to refill the vehicle, to fill it up, I believe it cost $126 Canadian. And then when I gave up the vehicle, as you guys saw, there was a chip on the, on the windshield. So there was a little bit of a charge for that. It was under $100 to repair the chip on the windshield. And I think there was a couple of other things. Because, because I, ref I refilled the vehicle and then I drove to drop it off, they said that um, when I, after I parked it, the needle moved. So they needed to put an extra tank of gas. So they built a little bit for that extra gas they needed to put in. They also build for um some detailing because some of the seats i did i was in a rush when i dropped it off and they said they found a couple of stains so they had to do a little bit of detailing and then for the repairing of the chip i think it came up to about 80 dollars extra that they build canadian that they build um for that but that was it for us it definitely was cost effective 
because first of all about 200 to 250 us was what we would have spent on transport the very first night alone now this is not going to be the scenario for everybody that comes into canada as a permanent resident because it, it depends on the city where you're going to be in um so if if for example you're going to calgary calgary's airport is within the city and if the place where you're staying is not too far away from from the airport you may not this might not be the option the other option of what we were thinking of early on might be better getting an uber um, getting a taxi service or settlement service might just be better for that one-time fee um, but for us just to that one evening to bring us home airport pickup alone was 200 to 250 us so it just made sense paying 289 98 us 298 us and have the vehicle for eight to nine days and it allowed us to be able to do a lot of stuff it allowed us it allowed us to be able to save time there was also the convenience factor because again if he's if you're just coming in as a single person and you don't even have a lot of luggage all of those things doesn't begin to factor in but if you come in as a family family of four family of five family of six you know the, well i don't even know if a family of six can fit in the truck <laughs> probably not but if you come in as a family of five for example then that could be an option a family of four then it might be just you know cheaper to just rent something um for the first few days however it is that you're able and then you take it from there why did we choose eight or nine days okay so that is the other trick that actually brought the cost down when i looked at how much it was to cost how much it cost to rent the truck from thursday when we arrived and then give it up on monday or tuesday it was like 20 to 50 dollar difference um to just keep it for like four extra days so so i was like okay um the time the cost jumped because there's always a period right so if you rent the truck for three days between three and five five days usually when you're doing a rental um you realize that the cost doesn't shift much but then after like i think the cost jumped by day 10 if, if i had rented a truck for 10 days or more the cost would have jumped almost into the thousands of dollars so we're just at that sweet spot where it was um not so expensive and um it allowed us the maximum amount of days that we could have had it for anyways something else that i learned from my previous rentals you don't necessarily have to pay for extra insurance coverage that's if, if you rent in with a credit card most credit card providers have built-in car rental insurance so and especially if you go in international right so there's there's nuances of course whether it covers liability which ones like what that would depend on your particular card provider on your particular credit card like what are the different things and the fine print and all of those things you have to find all of those details but it saves you money because you don't have to pay for extra insurance the other thing i found out when i was doing the research was that in alberta um, particularly in the government of alberta there is an exemption i'll put this here again someone was asking about it if you rent in a vehicle for i believe 14 less than 14 days you don't necessarily it's it's not illegal if you don't have a car seat that was a big one because car seats car seats are expensive guys and we are we are we, we will have had to pay for two and when you're paying for car seats you not you don't if you're renting the vehicle for seven days you don't pay for you don't choose the amount of days that you rent the car seat for once you rent it it's for the amount of days that you have the car for and so for us we were already going to come in and have to buy a car seat anyways like for our own personal use so it was good that we didn't have to rent um, a car seat from the company so you know we just didn't do that and in the first couple of days i think in the first three days we bought a car seat and installed it in the in the in the truck and that was fine one last tip there is a website right there's a website it's called auto slash.com so when i booked my trip initially this is how much it cost it cost a certain amount of dollars i'll put that here what you can do is you can take that reservation you 
put it on auto slash. So what auto slash does is it searches all the deals and it found several deals for me. So guys, I actually ended up booking this truck six times and I canceled five times and each time. So I'll book and then I will, I put the booking information on auto slash and then I'll get an email and the email is auto slash has found you a better deal for this rental and you could save $20 and I'll be like, okay. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll book again. Right. So I'll have two bookings and then I'll cancel the previous one and then I'll have that enter it again into auto slash and then they will do the same thing. And that's how I ended up slashing what was already a, a good deal. I think it was about 500 and something Canadian. Again, I'll have it here. And that price actually reduced to the 410 Canadian that I actually ended up paying at the end. So yeah, that had skipped my mind. So we've come to the end of this video. I hope that I have answered all of the questions. Um, some of the questions that we saw in the comments. Um, with regards to the truck, renting the truck, moving around, driving around and all of those things. And I hope you've enjoyed some of the footage from our old, you know, vlogs and all of those things and that it has been useful for you. So